Hi there, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to learn about predicates. We're going to see the mathematical definition, or how do we define predicates or writing in mathematics. Uh, predicates are, will be very useful uh, later on uh, as we go further in advanced topics. So, just to start with, predicates uh, 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 arise a lot in computer science and mathematics. Statements such as x is greater than 3 okay this is a statement another statement is x plus y equals z these are statements that uh, we see a lot in mathematics um, in computer science or even in uh, in other sciences we can have um, uh, statements uh, that uh, is written are written in in regular english like uh, computer x is under attack by an intruder, for example, by an intruder. So, um, these uh, statements are neither true nor false when the value of the variables are not specified. Here, for example, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, in, in this case, we cannot say this is true or false, okay, because we don't know what is the value of x itself. The same way here. We need to know three values in order to make the decision whether it was true or it is false. True or false. Okay. Now, the same way for this space, uh, statement, uh, we need to know the value of uh, x over here to identify whether it's true or false. Now, I need you to notice one thing in, this, uh, in these examples is that any statement has two parts. Let me rewrite this again over here. x is greater than 3. Any statement has two parts. The first part is the variable x, and this is the variable. This is called the predicate variable. Um, and uh, this is the subject of the statement. The second part, let me uh, identify that with a different color. The second part is this, the, 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 the actual statement or the predicate that we want to uh, uh, state for, for this uh, which is is greater than 3 so this uh, this part is called the predicate part and it refers to the property that the subject of the statement can ha have so this is the subject uh, the, which is the variable or the subject and this is the property uh, and the, the, this, the relationship uh, between the subject and the property is the predicate itself. And uh, basically what we can do in this case is we can identify uh, these, uh, these, these statements as, uh, as using a, a, a propositional function. So we can, let me just write it over here, we can say, we can define a propositional function a uh, function called p with the variable x and then we can say that this propositional function represents the predicate x greater than 3 and basically from now on what we'll try to do is we'll try to rewrite our statements or problems in such a way that that we define a function and then we see how we later on we'll see how we can handle these functions to to build more uh, complex uh, propositional uh, values or statements. So let's go and look at example number one. Example number one says let p of x denote the statement x is greater than 3. What are the true values of p of 4 and p of 5? Now before we actually uh, start working on this problem let's identify the propositional function. The propositional function p of x is defined here as the statement x is greater than 3. Now, as I said earlier, this function does not have a true or a false value because we don't know the, the, the value of the variable x. But in this example here, it's asking us what is the truth value of p4? So, just like in regular algebra, p of, p of 4, let me write down here, p of 4, ah, let me do it again, p of 4 is the statement 4 is greater than 3. Now in this case you can directly or at, at once uh, find out that p of 4 is true. The same way if you look at p of 2, 
p of 2 is just a direct substitution of the x value, so 2 greater than 3, and we directly know that p of 2 is actually false. So, that was a mathematical question. Now let's look at example number 2. Example number 2 uh, is a more uh, real-life scenario question. Uh, the question, or the example says, let a of x denote the statement computer x is under attack by an intruder. So, before we continue with this, let's just write down our function, our propositional function. a of x is the function that says computer x is under attack by an intruder. Okay, let's continue reading. The example further says, suppose that of the computers on campus, only the computer CS2 and Math1 is currently under attack by the intruder. What are truth values of A of CS1, A of CS2, and A of Math1? So here, basically, we're doing exactly the same thing what we did in the previous example. We are now going to substitute the uh, X with CS1, CS2, and Math1 respectively. So let's do the first one. The first substitution, A, CS1, the statement will be computer computer CS1 is under attack by an intruder. Now, let's let's uh, uh, map this to the actual situation that's happening. What's happening here? Uh, according to the example, the computer CS2 and Math1 are under attack, but computer CS1 is not under attack. Therefore, we can say that a of CS1 is false. Now, similarly, without going into much details, you can uh, you can go into the details on a piece of paper by yourself. But similarly, we can for sure say that the next the next case is true. Whoops, true, because computer CS2 is under attack according to the example over here, and the same way. A of math 1 is also true because according to this the the, the state of uh, the example that's mentioned over here computer math 1 is also under attack the next example shows that you can have propositional functions with more than one variable example 3 over here says if you read it let Q of X Y denote the statement X equals Y plus 3 what are the truth values for the for these propositions? So before we uh, uh, before we actually go into the uh, into the solution, let's write our propositional function, which is x equals y plus three. So as you can see over here, this is a function of two variables x and y, and and then uh, and all we need to do for to to check whether the propositions are true or not is just substitute accordingly. So the first question Q of 1 and 2 is the statement 1 equals 2 plus 3 and of course you will realize that this is false the same way Q of 3 and 0 where will, will, uh, will be 3 equals 0 plus 3 in this case it's going to be true. Now I'm sure by now that you have uh, gotten the general perspective of uh, propositional functions. For completeness purpose, let's do example 5. For example 5, here's a, um, a, a pre-statement which says the function rxyz denotes the statement x plus y equals z, where the values are assigned to the variables xyz, uh, uh, will determine the truth State uh, the truth uh, state of this of this statement. So in example five, um, calculating r of one, two, and three is just a straight um, substitution in this formula over here. So it's going to be one plus two equals three. In this case, this resolves to true, and I'm sure you can go ahead and do this by yourself. 
Now, in general, a statement involving involving n variables. Okay, let me just put a line over here so that we can continue. Now, in general, as I said, a statement uh, involving n variables um, uh, and x1, x2, uh, until xn, okay, it can be denoted by the propositional function p of x1 to xn. And this propositional function is uh, is basically an n-tuple function, or it base it is based on an n-tuple x1, x2 until xn to identify what is the truth value of of this function. Right. Now that we know how to write uh, propositional functions and uh, predicates with variables. Next, we're going to look at quantifiers, quantifiers, and see how we can use these uh, these propositional functions in conjunction with quantifiers to build more complex uh, 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 lo logical constructs.